Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel Mind Your Exam. In this video, we will be studying about synchronous serial transmission. So in the previous videos, we have studied two kinds of transmission. The first was the parallel transmission and the second is the serial transmission. And we saw that the first kind of serial transmission was asynchronous transmission. So in this video, we will be studying about the second type of serial transmission, which is the synchronous transmission. So in synchronous transmission, again, the sender will send the data as a continuous string of bits. That means zeros and ones. And this continuous string is known as a frame. Okay. Now the frames may contain either a single byte or multiple bytes and all these bytes will not have any gaps between them. So no gaps, without any gaps, these bytes might, will be present inside a frame and a frame may consist of a single byte that means 8 bits or more than 1 byte also. Okay. Now in synchronous transmission, there is no explicit start or stop bit. So if there is no start bit and there is no stop bit, then explicitly via bits, the sender is not telling the receiver when the communication is starting and when it is ending. Therefore, it is the receiver's responsibility to separate the entire string of zeros and ones. That means to break down the frame into individual bytes okay so receivers role become very important here because there is no explicit bit that tells about the starting or the stopping of the transmission okay therefore in this kind of uh, serial transmission the timing becomes very crucial and it becomes very crucial for synchronization so synchronization basically means that the clocks at the sender and the receiver end should be running at the same speed. They should start at the same moment, then only the pulses that they will generate will be the same. And since those pulses uh, govern how the bits will be transmitted each with each clock tick, if a bit is getting transmitted, then the same rule or the same pattern should be followed at the receiver end also for receiving each bit. Okay. Now the advantage of synchronous serial transmission is the speed of transmission. Since there is no gap between the uh, bits that are present in a frame, therefore this transmission is very fast. Okay. Or it is faster as compared to asynchronous but you must remember that uneven gaps may exist between the frames so even if gaps or uh, time delays are not present between the bits that are present in a frame but multiple frames might be separated by uneven gaps okay so if this is one frame say frame one then all the bits inside this frame will uh, will not have any gap. But another frame F2 might have some other kinds of data, but the difference between or the time gap between each of these frames might be different. So a third frame might start immediately following the second frame. In that case, this timing gap between frame 2 and frame 3 will be different from the time gap between frame 2 and frame 1 okay now coming to the third type of serial transmission which is the isochronous transmission in isochronous we basically ensure that no delay happens of any kind so the data that is being transmitted must not be delayed in any form therefore the delays or the time gaps between frames do not exist and the complete bit stream has to be synchronized okay the sender and receiver must continuously receive the data and the isochronous transmission guarantees that the data will arrive at a fixed rate okay so uh, there are no uneven gaps that can be expected in isochronous transmission Therefore, it is very useful for real-time communication like uh, 
if if you are doing a video call then in that case there will be no use of sending data up in uneven time gaps because as and when you are receiving the image and the video and the audio from the other side those uh, data bits should be received as soon as they are sent and there might should not be any delays so any kind of real time communication if it has to take place it should go through the isochronous transmission because in isochronous the frames do not have any kind of time delays between them their data keeps on arriving at a fixed rate and the complete bit stream is synchronized okay so this is an important point that you must remember for isochronous transmission that it is useful for real time communication so that's all for today's video please let us know if you understood the concept hit the like button subscribe to our channel and thank you for watching see you in the next video mind your exam